Okay, so hey guys, it's Quinston, and today we're going to look at something uh, which is very in interesting, if you think about it. It's called the odd even sort, and what it basically is, is it's a parallel sorting algorithm which you use in order to, well, sort algorithms, or sort numbers, basically. So what is the the purpose of this? Like, why uh, why is this important in any way possible? Like, we have different algorithms, the quick sort, the counting sort, and other sorts, like the bubble sort, which we don't use but still exists. But what is the speciality of this one? Well, with this algorithm, what you can do is you can sort numbers in a parallel fashion. And what do you mean by parallel? Uh, what I mean by parallel is uh, you can sort the numbers on a GPU, you can sort the numbers on a multi-core processor. And uh, yeah, QuickSort also has a parallelized uh, version of itself, but this one is dedicated or you know built for GPUs and uh, multi-core processors. So let's see how it works. Now, um, this is the code. And as you see, it's very similar. Uh, and here we have a swapping function, so we'll get to that. Int main. So in the first line, we have time underscore t. Uh, equal to t, uh, t and semicolon. So what does this mean? This is basically a time uh, variable which we use to set the SRAND function. Now the SRAND function is basically a function which you use to generate um, or you know seed random numbers. We're going to use an array of random, random numbers. So yeah, that's what we use that for. I have a separate tutorial in which I explain what this exactly is. So I'll leave the link in the description for you to uh, feast on. Here we have a int i. Int i is basically our loop variable which we are going to use to, which we basically will increment and decrement in order to go through the entire loop. Int array, uh, star array is basically a pointer to the beginning of the array. So here I'm not going to use the bracketed index uh, version of the array notation. I'll just show you how you can allocate memory space without that. So here we have int star array, and remember, array is a pointer to the beginning of the array. Um, int size equal to 10. This is the size of the um, of the array which we're going to deal with. You can change the size over here. You can type in 10, 100, 1000, 10,000. It doesn't really matter. So in the first block, uh, we're going to allocate memory. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to say array is equal to and um, here we have an array as an integer pointer. So we have to return an integer pointer. Malloc doesn't really care what it returns. It returns a white star. So here we have an integer pointer. And uh, size times size of int. So how much memory are we allocating? 10 multiplied by size of one int. That is how much memory we allocate. So you get the point, right? An array of, of integers will require size times the size of each element. And that's basically it. That's the array. So how do you, uh, you know, go through the entire array? So you, what you do is you take int star pointer equal to array. Now, you don't have to use the ampersand, which basically returns the address over here because it is array by default holds the ampersand. If you want to, um, you know, dereference it, you have to use a star. But by default, the ampersand is attached to the array notation. So you say int star pointer equal to array for i equal to zero, i is less than size, i plus plus. But here, I've added a comma and did pointer plus plus. So basically, pointer right now points to the first element of the array and when I increment pointer plus plus it will automatically shift to the next element so you have star pointer which after dereferencing will hold the value so right now star pointer is pointing to the array element which it is referring to equal to get random numbers so random number is a function which I defined at the top you can get to that later but for now let's just imagine that we will return a number uh, limit one uh, this is the limit to which it can shift to, and this is the window size, a uh, window shifter. So basically, if you write only 100 and you write a zero over here, you will have numbers from zero to 99. But if you write a 100 and one, you'll have numbers from one to 100. And that's how you can shift from one position to the other. Um, then you have the print random array. So here you have um, the same thing, pointer uh, equal to array. Basically, the first element of the array is given to pointer to point to. And similarly, we are you know, iterating through the entire array and you have printing and, and you're printing the values basically. So we get the random number, we generate the random uh, variables and what we what do we do next? So we obviously have to um, implement the, the sorting algorithm right now. So in order to do that, we have this, uh, this big for loop over here which will iterate through the odd even sort. What do you have to do? You have to say for i equal to zero, 
i less than size divided by 2 minus 1 i plus plus that's how many times or even saw it must run now mind you this is not done parallelly what is done parallelly is inside the odd even sort of function so let's go there and see what happens in the odd even sort function as you can see i've written over here should be done in parallel i, I wish you can see that see that uh you probably can though um i've written over here that inti basically our iteration loop array is basically the pointer to the array i'm i'm taking um passing by reference uh, not by, uh, not passing by value also you can't pass by value uh, an array that is not physically possible so you only pass by reference um an in size okay yeah next you go through the for loop now even sort and our sort so what is supposed to be done parallelly each of these these iterations, so even sort will be done parallelly, like all of the even sorts, and odd sorts will be done parallelly, all of the odd sorts. Now you might be wondering, like, won't they interfere with each other? Won't the parallelization of these um, these elements interfere with each other? Well, they might not, and I'll tell you why. Because uh, let's let's take an example of this one. Suppose you have about five threads, and each thread has each instance of the for loop so i equal to zero is for one thread i equal to what zero plus two is two i equal to two is another thread i equal to four is another thread i equal to six is another thread and so on and so forth so you have five different threads which go all up to say you know size minus one size is ten minus nine which is you have the last value is eight so that's how many you need zero through eight threads and each thread will operate on, guess what, i and i plus 1. So 0 thread will operate on 0 and 1. This, the 2 thread will operate on 2 and 3. And so forth, so on and so forth. So 8 will operate on 8 and 9. And guess what, 9 is the last element. And they will, op an even sort will only operate till 9. And odd sort will do the same thing. So they won't operate with each other. You see, all sort even sort is done differently, and in between them also, each of the threads operate in their own separate domains. They do not interfere with each other, each other, so that it doesn't happen. Okay, so that's why you can do it parallelly. You can only do parallelization in threads which do not interfere with each other, and here you can do it easily. So that's why I said i and i plus one, and I incremented i plus equal to two. So I've incremented by two times what I need to do. Now here I'm doing it sequentially, but if you have a GPU or an OMP library, you can actually do it with a multi-core processor. Oh, and of course a GPU with you know CUDA or Open, any any other library which actually supports that, that functionality. And that's how that actually works, or sort. And that's absolutely it. In odd, we start with one because we need, you need to be, you need to have it as an odd number. And you still go size minus one, which uh, which will be less than nine, which will go seven and eight, I guess. And yeah, i is equal, i is uh, plus equal to two, and the same thing over here. And how do I generate the random numbers? I generate them over here. Hmm? And this is the limit. This is the window shifter, which you add by. So what do I want you to take away from this? I want you to take away from this is that. Um, parallelization of algorithms is very very interesting and you can do that with a lot of different techniques now uh, quicksort also has its parallelization and that is the next video which I'm going to cover and at the end of uh, that video I'm going to show you how you can do it with a CUDA program and that would be really awesome and uh, also do some uh, paperwork just write on a piece of paper and understand like why parallelization will work and this is a sorting algorithm with parallelization in which you can do it in like the, the best case scenario if you check on Wikipedia also is big O of n which is extremely fast for a sorting algorithm very few sequential algorithms or none can do it in log n oh sorry big O of n so yeah this is pretty awesome uh, so thanks for watching um, see you later